This is the Surface Go. It is a smaller version of the Surface Pro. What is it like to draw on? That is what we're here to find out. So what is the Surface Go? It's a Windows tablet. It has a 10 inch screen with an 1800 by 1200 resolution. The one I'm using here has a 64 gigabyte hard drive, four gigabytes of RAM, and a Pentium Gold processor. Heart of gold, baby. Throughout the course of this review, I'm gonna be talking a lot about the Surface Pen and how it works, but one thing to keep in mind is it does not come with the Surface Pen. That costs extra. So does a keyboard cover. Out of the box, this tablet has Windows S mode enabled. The S mode is a locked down version of the Windows operating system. Basically what that means is the only applications you're allowed to download are applications that are available in the Windows store. It's for your own protection. But fear not good viewer, at any point in time you can leave S mode and you can turn it into a full blown Windows 10 computer. Which is exactly what I did as soon as I got it. Getting out of Windows S mode is pretty easy to do, but along the way, Microsoft's gonna warn you several times. Don't do it. What? If you leave S mode, you will never be able to return. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Once you cross this line. Yeah, I'm, I got that. Hey, come back. There are viruses over there, maybe. I figured you wouldn't be able to flop back and forth between S mode and standards Windows 10, but not even a factory reset is gonna take you back to S mode. It is a permanent decision. You regret it, don't you? I don't regret anything. Can you use it without a keyboard? Absolutely. Do you wanna use it without a keyboard? Eh, that's a different story. Even though the Windows operating system itself has gotten pretty easy to use just with touch gestures, many of the apps that I use with it are still a little bit cumbersome without a keyboard. Now when you're drawing, if you need your keyboard shortcuts but you don't want to use the keyboard, you can offset that by using something like Tablet Pro. That's going to put the shortcuts directly on your screen so you can just tap them. It's pretty handy but at the same time you're also going to be taking up more screen real estate that way. Now the hardware itself left a great first impression. And second impression. Yes, and second. And it feels good. It's a little over a pound. The screen looks great. The resolution isn't that high but when you condense it to a 10 inch screen, it looks really good. And the glass of the screen itself is made out of, uh, what do my notes say? Corn and Gorillas? Corn and Gorilla Glass, that's the brand name. And the build in general is nice. I got the keyboard cover for it again. It's a nice little keyboard. It seems like they've improved the trackpad responsiveness from what I remember. And I thought the keyboard might be kind of small to type on, but generally I had no problems. The kickstand folds nicely along the back. It conceals the micro SD slot and all the gobbledygook trademark stuff that you have to print on the back of every laptop. That's a nice touch that keeps the device itself looking pretty cleanly design from the outside. The hinge is what I expected. Holds up pretty well. It can't withstand the full pressure of your hand, but at the same time, it's not just going to slam down as soon as you just brush it with your palm. You should talk about the pen. Yes, my feelings on the Surface Pen have kind of changed over time. I used to love it. You don't love me anymore? Don't cry. Let me finish. In the four years since I got my first Surface Pro, the quality of the pen has definitely gotten better. Here's the thing. Also, the quality of every other device you can draw on has gotten better too. Now we have the Apple Pencil. A lot of these third-party Wacom alternatives have taken big leaps forward in terms of quality. So now when I compare this pen to all of the other stuff out there, I just like it. I don't love it. See? No, no need to cry. Now performance wise, the Surface Pen has been roughly the same for about the last two years. They've been adding things like tilt control, but the general experience of drawing with the pen is about the same. Which is to say my pen test did pretty well. Now one thing I found when I started sketching and drawing, and you're probably going to see it in the background illustrations that I'm doing here, is that the lines really looked horrible. Which was weird because I did my pen test first and everything looked good when I was drawing with a ruler or whatever. And I was just kind of fooling around with the pen. And I think the conclusion that I came to here is that when my hand is resting on the surface, I get a lot jankier lines than I do when my hand is not resting on the surface. I don't know if that's because it's so sensitive that it picks up every little jitter that my hand has, or if my hand on the screen is actually throwing off the pen in some way. Either way, you're gonna see me wearing a drawing glove and that is why, and that was something that I would definitely recommend is that the quality of the pen dramatically improved when I put it on. I still ended up turning on stroke smoothing in Photoshop, which definitely helps. Slow and medium lines look decent without it, but faster lines actually look about the same when I'm using Photoshop. Not quite as clean when the stabilization is off as you'd say see on a Wacom or an Apple Pencil, 
but definitely within the acceptable range. There is one quirk that I kept finding, which occasionally the pen would just jump or hiccup or burp. Basically, it'd make these little jaggy lines. I don't know why. I definitely noticed this when I was drawing, not just testing it. It's not a showstopper, but it was kind of annoying and not something I've ever seen on a Surface product before. Now, I broke my own rule before doing this review, and that is I read someone else's review. Now, I could explain. I wasn't planning on testing the Surface Go, but so many people requested it, I figured I'd give it a go. That was, that was a good pun. That wasn't even in the script. So the review I did check out was Surface Pro Arts Review. He posted it a couple weeks ago, and he did some really comprehensive pen tests over there. I don't have nearly as many styluses to test, but I do have the older Surface Pro 4 pen. And according to him, it performs a little bit better than the current Surface Pro pen. So I dusted it off and tried it out. <coughs> Where am I? What's going on? And lo and behold, it's actually better. Oh my gosh. Honestly, it's not that much better. There were less fish hooks on the faster strokes, but it felt almost identical in every other way. So if you can't find an old Surface Pro 4 pen, don't go freaking out in the comments. You're gonna be fine if you buy one of the new pens. It's not a big deal. Uh, Brad, I think they're freaking out in the comments. This happens You feeling better now? Yeah, I do. I made me some tea. Yo, you gotta talk about my heart of gold, bro. That's right, we gotta get to performance. So the reason I was going to skip the Surface Go was because I was having a hard time recommending a low-end computer for art. Often, I'm dealing with larger files. If you have a bunch of stuff open, browser tabs, uh, some emails, uh, work documents, background applications, and then you load up your drawing software. The stuff that I consider to be my basic computing workflow for the day, four gigabytes bytes of RAM just isn't that much. So this sort of thing is hard for me to test. I haven't used this as my full-time computer. So my experience over the last week, I've basically been booting it up, using some art apps, drawing on it, using it that way. And, and when I do, it's actually really nice. But I think if I'm gonna get a Windows tablet, I wanna use it as my computer. And, and when I think about everything I would be using it for, I just don't think it has enough juice. So if you're tempted by this, you're definitely gonna wanna jump up to the model that has eight gig gigabytes of RAM. Now this is a controversial opinion. Actually, it's not controversial at all. Everybody kind of believes this. It's just that this is not what people want to hear. You spend a little bit more money now, you get the better model, it is going to perform better for you in the future down the road doing what you want to do with it. Now I use several applications. I use Medibang, I use Sketchable, I use Sketchbook Pro, and honestly I found the drawing experience to be pretty smooth. I wasn't getting much lag, it was peppy, and I thought it was a good experience. And then I got the Photoshop. Running Photoshop is like eating 10 pizzas. I can do it. I just don't feel so good. Photoshop is a resource hog and it really showed when I loaded it up on the Surface Go. As I was drawing, it wasn't uncommon just to drop lines or stuff would stop loading in the middle of a drawing and I'd have to wait for it to catch up. And for the most part, I was just using the basic brushes. Once you load up some of the more advanced ones, look out. This really isn't surprising at all. Photoshop isn't really meant to run on something like this. I think the recommendation for Photoshop is actually eight gigs of RAM. So overall, the Surface Go actually won me over. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And I think part of the reason why is I just really like the way the Surface line is designed. I'm a sucker for good hardware design. And this is really good hardware design. The way the pen elegantly magnetizes to the side, the way the type cover works so seamlessly, it just works really well. You know, the pen is pretty good. As I said before, I don't love it as say as much as the Apple Pencil or a Wacom stylus, but you know, it gets the job done. It's a decent pen. And I thought the 10 inch size would hold me back more than it did. But since I was drawing a lot in Sketchable, I actually found it to be just fine. So if you have any comments or questions, or wanna send some fan mail, let me know down below. That is all I have for today. If you enjoyed this review, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you in a couple of days.